Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus told his disciples, if any, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their crosses and follow me. For those who want to save their lives will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to, the, to Pilate. Pilate spoke to the crowd, What do you wish me to do with this man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So after flogging Jesus, Pilate handed him over to be crucified. As we see Jesus' journey to the cross, we hear those words that have been shouted from the crowd, a crowd that just simply a few days before that had been yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. But who is it that yells out? Who is it that says those words, crucify him? Reality of it is, is that it's in this world of sin that we see who it is. If we were to shine the light tonight, if we were to, to point a spotlight, the reality of it is, is that those are the people out here in this crowd tonight. Who is it out here that yells crucify him? 
whenever we die, whenever we, 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 we disobey God, whenever we go against his commands, it's us. It's us that yells, crucify him. It's by our sins that he is on that cross. And it's us that many times are the ones that are yelling the loudest. And so we remember that as we see what Christ has done for us. As he is crucified. As his body and blood is broken on that cross. And so we meditate upon that. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you were condemned to death for politically expediency. Be with those who are imprisoned for the convenience of the powerful. You were the victim of unbridled injustice. Change the minds and the motivations of oppressors and exploiters to your way of peace. Jesus, innocent though condemned, have mercy and hear us. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Carrying his cross by himself, Jesus went out to the place called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. The cross of Jesus Christ was handed over him and he carried it himself. Because no one else in this world could carry that cross. It was a cross that only he could bear. One that was for the redemption of all the world. Even for those who yelled crucify him. It was a redemption for us. For those who sit in this place. For those who sit in the darkness of this night. But yet... He alone, he alone bore that cross upon himself and he alone carried it by himself. It's not enough that he carried that, but he also carried that weight of that sin as well. And so we look to Jesus Christ and we give him glory and we see him as he carries his cross. Lord Jesus, you carried the cross through the rough streets of Jerusalem. Be with those who are loaded with burdens beyond their strength. You bore the weight of our sins when you carried the cross. Help us to realize the extent and the cost of your love for us. Jesus, bearing a cross not your own, have mercy and hear us. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. And they went out. They came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross.
Jesus, being fully man, felt the weight of that cross. He felt the weight of every one of those sins, and it was a crushing blow. It was a blow in which Satan himself was probably standing back and reveling in, because he thought he had defeated the Savior. He thought he had defeated the Son of God. And yet we see him in the streets. And the Romans called out to someone at the side, and he says, come, help carry this burden. It reminds us that as Christ carried our burden and our sin upon himself, are we willing to carry the burdens of other? For Christ died in order that we would be redeemed, that we, be, we would be made right, that those sins would be paid for. And he taken our burden. And so he calls us as his people to carry the burden of others. Ask yourselves, are we willing to do that? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are worn down by fatigue. Be with those from whom life drains all energy. You need the help of a passing stranger. Give us the humility to receive aid from others. Jesus, weighed down with exhaustion and in need of help, have mercy and hear us. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. A great number of people followed Jesus, and among them were women who were wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Jesus being burdened by the cross, being torn to where, to a point of where he had to have help. But yet, we see the love of Jesus Christ. For as he saw the women crying around him, what did he do? Did he seek pity for himself? Did he seek the, the limelight? Did he want to be the one who played the victim? No, in the compassionate heart of Jesus Christ, he looked upon those of Jerusalem. He looks upon those whom he loves. And he says, don't weep for me. Don't cry for me. Because what's happening here, as gruesome and as, as tragic as it is, that's not the problem. The problem is in those who are filled with sin. It's in those who are in this world. It's in those who sin has grabbed a hold of. And so Jesus tells them in his heart, he says, do not weep for me. Weep for those. Weep for those who are in sin. Weep for your children. Weep for yourselves. The thing is that the tears that come to our eyes this night while we see Jesus hanging on the cross, need to be tears for ourselves as well. Because we have been in that bondage of sin. We're in that bondage. And even more than that, we need to weep for those in the world. Because there are many out there who do not know the love of Jesus Christ. There are many out there who do not know what Christ has done. 
And so we need to see them with the same compassionate heart. That we, need, we too need to bear our crosses by proclaiming the word and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not to look upon ourselves, not to be served ourselves, but to serve others. Lord Jesus, the women of Jerusalem wept for you. Move us to tears at the plight of the broken in our world. You embrace the pain of Jerusalem, the city of peace. Bless Jerusalem this day and lead it to the path of profound peace. Jesus, the King of peace, whom kept the city of peace, have mercy and hear us. We adore you, O Christ. We bless you. When they came to the place called Golgotha, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. The soldiers divided his garments among them by casting lots. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves and for my clothing, they cast lots. Once again, we see Jesus Christ about to be crucified, about to be placed upon that cross. Does the world care? Did the world care? No. For the scripture said that there would be such a lack of caring that they, what that they would do is they would take his clothes and they would divide them and they would actually cast lots to see who would receive those clothing. To those Roman soldiers and to all those who stood around to see the spectacle, it was just another crucifixion. It was just another spectacle. It was just another happening for you to spend your afternoon to watch. But yet our Savior Jesus Christ was about to be crucified. He would be hung upon that cross with no clothing on. He would be put up there in order to be humiliated. Would anyone care? The question is, is do we care? Do we care? Or do we see our Savior? Are we as guilty as those, as those who cast lots for his clothes? How many times in our lives do we go out into the world and do we ignore Jesus Christ? Sure, the Bible lays on our, our, our shelves. Is it full of dust? If we have to blow the dust off to open the, open the pages, are we just as guilty as those Roman soldiers? If that Bible simply lays there, if we ignore the cry of Jesus Christ, are we always in study? Are we always in prayer? Or are, those, or are there people out there that we refuse to pray for? When we do that, it becomes another spectacle once again. We need to reflect upon that. How many times do we treat Jesus in the same way that the Roman soldiers treated him. Lord Jesus, bearing our shame, as you are stripped of your dignity, we remember all those exposed to ridicule, battered wives, victims of abuse and violence, and all the exploited. Clothe them with your mercy and bestow on them dignity 
that belongs to them as children of God. Jesus, whose body is for us the image of God, have mercy and hear us. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. When they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified Jesus. And with him, they crucified two criminals, one on the right and one on the left. on that hill the hill just outside of the city they placed Jesus upon that cross and they nailed him there and as they placed him up in the center they placed a thief on the right and a thief on the left and it's there we see where salvation comes it's there that we finally see the gospel message for they are hanging on that cross the cross of Jesus Christ, there, he's hanging there, taking the weight of our sins, dying for us. And the reality of the world is there in front. There are part of the world that looks upon him and just simply sees him as another man being crucified, ready to scorn, ready to make fun of, ready to mock. But for those those who recognize who Jesus is. It's here that we see what the cross is all about. For that other thief on the other side looked to Jesus and he said to them, Lord, you're an innocent man. Remember me in paradise. And it's here that we finally see, we finally see that gospel message. But the one on the left there is only holds condemnation. But for the one who recognized and acknowledged Jesus, it's on that cross that he took upon that and he told that thief, today you shall be with me in paradise. You see, that is the gospel message for us. For us to hear those words. Because in reality, we're hanging on those crosses as well. That's what sin does, does to us. If we listen to Satan, it sounds like this world and sin and, and the fleshly and desires and all of those things are things that we should, we, should, we should celebrate in that. But the reality of it is, is that every time we turn our back on Jesus, every time that we give in to the sinly fleshly desires, every time we do that, Satan simply takes a nail and pounds it into our hands. He puts us on that, on that crucifix just as Jesus. Because the road of sin is death. But yet Jesus looks upon us. And he looks and for those who confess their sins. Those who acknowledge Jesus. Those who repent of those sins. God who is faithful and just. He delivers us. And he tells us the same message. He gives us the same message. He tells us, today you too will be in paradise. You see, that's for everyone here. That's for each one of us here. As we acknowledge Jesus and we proclaim his name as Savior and Lord, he speaks that into our ears as well. Today you too will be in paradise.
Lord Jesus, source of infinite life, we remember all who suffer unjustly. We mourn the way of earth has been tortured and abused. Bring us to your cross and preserve us until the resurrection. Jesus, wounded for our broken world, have mercy and hear us. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. To what can I liken you? To what can I compare you, O daughter of Jerusalem? What like can I use to comfort you, O virgin daughter of Zion? For vast as the sea is your ruin, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Once again, we see the compassionate heart and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. For as he looks upon his mother, he sees her suffering. And he calms it and he comforts her. He comforts her, her in her deepest, her deepest hurt. For all of us, or most of us, there are some of us that are a little younger back there. Hopefully you're not parents yet, but someday you will be. We all know that the greatest love that we can show is to our children. And the worst thing that we could ever see are those children suffering. And so Jesus looks upon his mother. And in the midst of his suffering, in the midst of the weight of his sin that he takes upon himself, he comforts his mother. But that comfort isn't only for her, it's for each one of us as well. I'm sure as we've meditated upon this cross and we've talked about what sin does and we've looked back into our life and we realize the ways in which we have betrayed Jesus the ways in which we have have ignored him the ways in which we just simply abandon him but yet it's in the midst of that he, he comes to us once again and he comforts us too with his word for while this is a night of tragedy, it is also a night of comfort. And he says to each one of you, he says, he says to you, your sins are forgiven. That's why I'm here. Take heart. For it's in this, it's in this that I will make you whole. It's in this I will give you peace. It's in this I will comfort you. Lord Jesus, whose love is like that of a parent, as you suffer, a sword pierces the heart of your blessed mother. Comfort parents who grieve the loss of children and give us strength to offer support and strength. Jesus, heart of compassion, have mercy and hear us. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you.
When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And when Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. We look at the cross and we look upon it and we see the body of Jesus Christ dead and lifeless dead because of the sin of the world but yet at the same time we look upon it and we realize what great love is all about for it was there on Jesus Christ when he gave it up that he said those words, it is finished. Which in the Greek, in, the, in, in Aramaic, it means to telestai. Which means the debt is paid. The comfort for each one of you tonight is this. Your debt is paid. No longer do you owe Satan in this world your death. But Jesus has taken that away and he now is experiencing that death, that separation from God. You see, that's really what death is all about, separation. And our spiritual death is that, separation from God himself. On the cross, Jesus know, knew what that was. He suffered that. His words just before he gave up and he said that the bed is paid was, was this. Ali, Ali, Lama Samachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That is what we deserve. But today, as we see his lifeless body on that cross, we realize that that is our death and that is the separation that Jesus Christ has taken upon himself so that we will never know that separation. We will never know a day what it's like without Jesus and without our, our Heavenly Father and without the Holy Spirit guiding us through our lives. We will never know a day being separated from God. And that's what the gospel message is tonight. That's where Jesus brings the comfort to us. Just as he comforted his mom, he made sure that his mother was taken care of and that there was someone there to take care of him. And it's the same thing here. When the debt was paid, we were taken care of. And he gives us too that same one, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit who comes to us each day of our lives so that we know even when we're in the midst of despair, even when we're in the midst of suffering, He reminds us, the Holy Spirit speaks to us and reminds to us and says to us, God loves you, look at the cross. For it's there that God has washed away those sins, He has brought forgiveness to this so that we, as the nation of Israel, as Jerusalem itself, can with all confidence say that we are and as children of God, we see that love. We know that we are taken care of. And we know that we too will have life. But now though, let's ponder that as we see Jesus on that cross. Lord Jesus, your mother and your dearest friend stayed with you to the bitter end. You even, while racked with pain, you ministered to them. Be with all broken families today and tend to those who long for compassion. You cared for your loved ones, even in your death throes. Give us a love for one another that is strong enough than the fear of death. 
Jesus, trusting to the very end, have mercy and hear us. When it was evening, they, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean cloth, a linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb. Jesus, Lord of life, you became as nothing for us. Be with those who feel worthless in the world's eyes. You were laying in a cold, dark tomb and hidden from the sight. Be with all who suffer and die in secret, hide from the eyes, hidden from the eyes of the world. Jesus, seed planted in the earth, have mercy and hear us. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We implore you, O Lord, that your abundant blessing may be upon your people who have held the passion and the death of your Son in devout remembrance that we may receive your pardon and the gifts of your comfort and may increase in faith and take hold of eternal salvation. To the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> 